We bought in too much to the idea that profit motive is God of all things. My name is Zach Uhas. I'm a co-founder of Tenkiv. The initial goal of Tenkiv was to see if we could make power from a sustainable source for less money than you can make power from fossil fuels. We're saying we need to be cheaper than fossil fuels and we need to be a complete replacement for fossil fuels essentially where this can be used for almost everything that you need to use energy for. Just making a solar panel. Uh, if you if you isolate the panel and compare it to other things that are that are out there, it's vastly more efficient and cost effective. But where it really starts to shine and demonstrate its ability to be uh, a, a broad solution to um, sustainable energy problems is is that it's it's built as an integrated system. Um, what we call the Tenkiv Nexus for. Uh, very easily, with, with, ver with minimal modifications, um, it can be used for providing power to anything that you would need power for. Uh, instead of being focused on some very specific target, like heating up water to this specific temperature, and if you ever want to do anything else, you need to make an entirely new product. Uh, I, that's, a, that's an unsustainable development method because every time you need to address a new problem, you have to go through an, entire, uh, an entirely new design process. Uh, the, the tech DAC is a data acquisition system. We didn't think that it would have been necessary to make our own data acquisition system, but everything that's out there that is as high resolution as we wanted and more importantly uh, robust, so essentially um, having all isolated inputs so that if you have any sort of uh, like power surges or, or even more crazy things like that going on in the electronics, uh, it's able to keep running reliably. These sort of like fancy uh, data acquisition systems with lots of inputs that are all isolated and protected in other ways are extremely expensive, like $15,000 for a system like that generally. And uh, the problem is since our, uh, since our entire focus is cost-effective energy, if we're spending $15,000 on a data acquisition system, it's impossible to make cost-effective energy. So we sort of, there's no inherent reason why it had to be that expensive because of the components that are in it. It's just, I don't know, maybe they're marking it up a lot or something weird is going on there. But we essentially ha ended up having to make our own in order to make it an, an affordable part of the system. So it's a flat plate collector that's vacuum insulated, uses full fluid contact phase change for all of its heat transfer and is made out of nothing but steel and glass which are both extreme, uh, extremely cheap. Uh, but ultimately, the, the way we're able to do all of those things uh, goes back to what our sort of core technological breakthrough is. We made a new way of handling thermal energy. The pi thermal circuit is a set of structural properties regarding handling thermal energy in a complex system that if perfectly implemented in a sort of hypothetical system, would yield the maximum theoretically attainable efficiency. Now, we're not saying that we were able to perfectly implement these structural properties. We're not saying that we were able to have a perfect implementation of the pi thermal circuit, but knowing those structural properties enabled us to have a much more concise and integrated approach to reaching towards that theoretical limit. Heat's able to naturally flow from where it's being added to where it needs to go uh, with, with essentially no automation or control of any kind. And this means that no matter what installation you're doing, you don't really need to change your design. Like, there's, you don't need to design a desalination plant any, that has 10,000 panels significantly differently than you need to design a uh, home power system that has 20 panels. Once you get to the point where heat can naturally flow without you needing to do a ton of design work for each separate application, like things become modular really easily. So the first thing that we're doing is uh, water sanitation. 
um, which is essentially just heating up water until you kill all the stuff in it. The 10 kev Nexus can run in a way bigger temperature range than most solar thermal collectors. So it's not just designed to make hot water or to do space heating. It can be designed to do a whole range of heating. And because you have that big temperature range, you can also have all sorts of other modules that require a, a whole bunch of different temperatures. So for example, generally when you're making electricity, you want really high temperatures. That's an oversimplification, but that's basically what it is. And uh, we can get up to like 200 C um, with the 10 Nexus, and that would normally be lower than you'd want to make electricity at. But the thing is, we're, we're making that 200 C heat so cheaply that it still ends up, first of all, it's, it's more efficient than most photovoltaic collectors. Um, but it's so cheap that it's like it's still just how you would want to make electricity when compared to even giant solar farms, although that's not really the best comparison because they're still a lot more expensive than fossil fuels. But this is way cheaper than fossil fuels, like a third the cost of fossil fuels. But anyway, on modules, um, yeah, so you could, you could put a heat engine in there and use that to make electricity or you could put an absorption chiller in there and use that to cool things or just any sort of heat pumping that you would want to do. Um, the other one, the other big one is we, we're, we're doing um, water desalination and recycling and all these things which ultimately come down to using the same module which is uh, a thermal distillation module. You can attach all sorts of these different modules to the same group of collectors, it, attach them into the same nexus and do all of these things at the same time without, again, without having to make any specific considerations for that installation. Uh, and, then, and that's what we mean by it's so modular. Oh, and, and in addition to that, of course, the number of panels that you're using is essentially completely irrelevant. You can just add on. It, it doesn't increase the complexity of, of the system if you have 10,000 panels or 50 panels. Storing heat is so much cheaper than um, using a battery uh, and all the expensive chemicals that you need for a battery. Um, that they're just storing it to heat and then converting it back to electricity, even though that converting back has an efficiency hit, it ends up being more cost effective. Um, but essentially it's insanely expensive. It's either insanely expensive or insanely, insanely inefficient to store electricity or both. Um, and storing heat is like the simplest thing in the world. The problem, that, the problem that we have that solar thermal technologies have right now with heat storage isn't storing the heat. The problem that they have is, you add, again, every time you're adding where you're pulling heat from and where you're sending heat to, uh, with with existing technology that starts making things a lot more complex really quickly So if you need to be switching back and forth between if you're taking heat from solar panels or you're taking heat from uh, From your storage tank that was Before that was you were putting heat into it and now at night for example You're taking heat out of it like all of these things have a lot of complexity um, But the the short point is that um, it, with, with heat when, when heat is sort of your base form of energy that you're always dealing with, storage is super easy. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it depending on the temperature range and the specifics of the installation. We might have um, like a, a, a single fluid that we just change the temperature of or be doing something more fancy with some phase change. You could store heat at 110 degrees C um, and two months later it could be at 100 C. I think if you're being realistic about what Tenkiv is at this point, it's uh, it's much more than uh, what you'd have with a normal startup company because uh, it's completely impact driven. Um, our path in terms of what type of organization we are isn't of a primary concern to us. Our primary concern is dealing with energy availability and climate change.